So this spreadsheet is an example of a very large data set. Uh, it contains sample data. And there's 500 rows of data in here. And you'll notice that it's customer data for a fictional company. And there's annual sales and sales rep data in here. Uh, sales reps are 1 through 10, uh, selling to a variety of states. And so there is some statistical information uh, that would be useful that we could pull from all of this data. And one of the techniques you can use is advanced formulas. And so I have an example of that here. If we wanted some rep information, we said there were reps one through 10. So this is just typed in. And actually I did reps one and two, and I used that fill feature that will generate the rest for you. And all the rest of this data is basically displayed using advanced functions. So we'll take a look at customers first. Uh, what we want are the number of customers for each rep. So if we look at our data, what would give us that figure would simply be counting the number of times a rep number appears, because it appears next to each customer. So uh, we can use the count if function for that, and we can have it look at everything in the reps column. Now to make these advanced functions a little easier to type, what I did was I gave several columns names. So for sales reps, I highlighted all the data, so all 500 rows. And once I highlighted everything, I clicked on the name box and I keyed in the word reps. Okay, so all of this data can be referred to using the text name reps instead of the cell address. Okay. And using range names is a little bit more accurate than trying to manually key in the range or even dragging over the range. When you have a large number of records, that becomes <laughs> quite tedious. Okay. So if you can look here, um, you can see I did create quite a few range names. So if they select reps, it's going to be this whole column of rep numbers. And if they select company, it's the whole column of company names. And the same with last name, it's gonna give me all of the last names. Sales gives me all of the sales figures. And that just makes doing your formulas easier. So looking at the formula, I have reps in here instead of a range. And then what I'm having it look for is the rep equal to one, because one is currently in A3. So I'm going to basically do the same thing here for rep two, except for instead of looking for rep number one, I want it now to look for rep number two. So this advanced function, you can actually copy. Okay, and it will then look for the different reps. And this will give you a total of how many customers each rep has. And then we move over to sales. So we're going to use SUMIF because if we only want to see rep one's total sales, okay, we want it to look in the sales column, but we only want it to add if the sales rep is number one. So to do that, we're using a sum if. And the first thing you have to give it is basically your criteria or the range of cells containing your criteria. Okay, then uh, you give it your arithmetic operator followed by the value. Now, if you wanted to total greater than one, greater than five, 
that you'd have to put the greater than operator in here. We are doing a straight assignment. We want to look for, for reps that are equal to one. Okay, so in double quotes, and this is kind of the weird thing about SUMIF, is that your actual criteria here that you're checking has to be in double quotes, which is kind of weird when you are doing a numeric check, but that is how you have to enter it. Uh, and then you have a comma followed by what it is that you want to sum. And we want to sum the sales. So again, we give it the range of cells that contain the criteria. Then in double quotes, we tell it what the criteria is. And then the last thing we're going to give it is the range of cells that we want to total or sum. Okay, and for rep one, okay, that is their total sales. Now we're going to do the same thing here for rep two. So if you are not familiar with this, I would go into insert function and we are doing a conditional sum. Okay, and we're just checking for one thing. Okay, we're checking for the rep equal to two in this case. So we know the function is sum if. So I'm going to look for that one and then I'm going to click OK. So the range we said was reps. This is what it's going to look in to determine if it needs to total or not. The criteria is equal to. And the range that we want it to add together is our sales. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see that it did put the total in there for rep two. Now you may be thinking, oh my gosh, do I have to key that long thing in for three, four, all the way through 10? You don't have to key it in, but if you copy, you are going to have to edit. So I'm going to copy. And you'll notice that it's showing me the total for rep two all the way down. So you do need to change what you are checking to the appropriate rep. So I'm just going to go up here and edit each one of these. Another way to edit is just to simply double click in the cell. And it really doesn't matter if you use the formula bar or if you double click. I honestly think it's a little easier in this case just to use your formula bar. Okay, and at this point, we should have our totals for the various reps. Then we want to not only have the total for each rep, we want to know what the average sales per customer are for each rep. Okay, and because we don't want the average for all the sales, we want to limit it to reps, we have to use average if. So I'm going to get rid of these and we'll talk and don't kind of ignore Oh, we'll get rid of those two. Um, anytime you have formulas or functions based on a cell, if you delete the cell, you're going to get uh, an error. So we're looking at average sales. We're going to do average if, if and you will see that this is pretty much set up the exact same way that sum if is. Okay, it's just that instead of totaling everything, we are now going to average everything for rep one. So we'll key it in manually uh, for rep two, and then we'll copy and edit. So I'm going to use the FX just because I think this is a lot easier if you're first starting out. And so for the range, again, this is the range that we are going to check to determine if we're going to include the number in the average. So the range here is reps. And the criteria is we want the rep equal to number two in this case. And then the range that we want it to average is our sales range. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. 
So for rep two, this is the average. And now I am going to fill it down because simply editing one number is a little faster than trying to key this all in manually. And you may be thinking, well, why aren't we just clicking on the rep number on the left? And the reason we aren't just clicking on that cell is that this is needs to be inserted in double quotes. And if you click on a cell, that doesn't happen. So that's why these are manually being entered uh, to give us the average for each rep. So now that we have the average for the reps, we need to figure out the commission rate that they're going to uh, receive. And the commission is based on the average sales. So we're gonna be taking the average sales and we're gonna be going into this table and we're gonna be grabbing the appropriate rate. So kind of how this table works is anything zero to 40,000 is going to be a one. Uh, anything between 40 and 42 is gonna end up with a 1.5% commission. 42 to 44 is gonna be a 2% and so on. Then we get to the upper end, which is 58 or above. That'll be 5.5. So the lookup that we're gonna do is a horizontal lookup. And that is because our data is in rows. So if the, the table that you want to look in and retrieve a value from, if that is organized by longer rows, okay, then you would be using HLOOKUP. And what you have to give this to start with is the value you want to look up in the table. And we wanted to look up the average sale value. And then you have to give it the range of the table. And you can either highlight the data in the table and give it a name like I did, or you can simply highlight the table while you are entering the formula and it'll put the range in there. And then you have to tell it which row you want to display data from. Okay, and we want row two. So I'm gonna key it in down here. Okay. And again, if you know this formula, uh, you can just manually key it in. If you don't, you're gonna to wanna to use insert function. Okay. Uh, it does kind of give you a little hint down here regarding what you need. So first it's saying lookup value. So this is what we're gonna look up and a comma. And then the table, well, that is this data down here. Now, because I named it commission, I could either type commission in or I could highlight, okay? To me, uh, it's probably faster to type commission in, but this is a fairly short table, so highlighting doesn't take long either. Okay, then you do a comma. And the last thing you need to tell it is the row that you want to retrieve data from. So we have data in two rows. The percentage is in row two, so that is the row that I want to retrieve the data from. Okay. And at this point, I can go ahead and copy it down. Because I have a range name in here, I don't need to worry about the table changing when I copy. And what I mean by changing is that normally when you copy, and you can see that on our cell D4, when we copy down to D5, it changes because of relative cell addressing. When we go down to row six, you're gonna see D6. Go down to seven, you'll see D7. That is built into Excel. So you can copy formulas like this. Um, the problem is if you don't use a range name for your lookup table, the cells in your lookup table would change too. And that's kind of a problem. Uh, so using the range name makes it easier to enter these advanced functions. And it also prevents your ranges from changing 
and that is particularly important when you're dealing with lookup tables. So at this point, we have all of the commissions, and so now we can just determine the commission on the total sales. This does not involve anything advanced. This is a pretty straightforward formula that is just the commission rate times the total sales. And you can see that we took total sales times commission, and that can easily be copied, again, because of relative cell addressing, those cell references are changing just as they should so that we can get the commission for each rep. Now that brings us over here. So we would like to know for rep one, what the highest sale was and who that customer is. We wanna do the same thing for rep two, three, all the way through 10. So, This involves using the max ifs function. Now, the max function, all by itself, is going to give you the highest value in a range. We want to only look at values for rep one. So that requires using max ifs. And you can see that the value that we want to retrieve the highest from is sales, and that is listed first. Okay. And what our criteria are is we want the rep to be number one. So we want it to look at all of the reps that are number one and display the highest number. Okay. And that is exactly what it is doing. So if you knew this, you could type in equal max ifs. And if you weren't familiar with it, you might even just key in the word max because you know you want the highest value. And then you could kind of look through here and see if you can find a statistical function that will let you include an if. And so here again, we said the range that we want to look at and retrieve a value from is sales. And then our criteria is going to be in the reps range. And in this case, we want, oops, the rep equal, equal to two. And we'll click OK. Now this could be one, let's try this. We'll replace the two with the cell and press enter. Whenever possible, if you can replace with the cell and use that, it will allow you to copy. Now, if we had to have double quotes around the one, like we do over in average and average if and sum if, we can't use the reference for that. But on this one, it's not requiring the double quotes, and we can actually copy this down. And that just makes our life so much easier. And now to do kind of the same thing, but instead of display the highest sale, we want to display the customer's name instead. Uh, this is going to be a little trickier because we still need to look at rep one, and we need to figure out which is the highest sale, and then we want to retrieve the last name if it's true. Okay? If, if it's not the highest sale, we don't want to see it. Okay? So um, that actually requires comparing the highest sale with every single sale for rep one, and when we have a match, when they are equal, we're going to display the last name. So you can see that this max ifs is kind of embedded in this. And I'm going to enter this in manually here for rep two. So this is an equal if. And it is kind of complicated. Our logical test then is going to be we're going to look at that highest sale. And we want to know if it is equal to 
uh, basically that entire max function. So what I do is I'm going to basically X escape out of here and we'll come over here and copy this. This will make things easier. I'm just highlighting it, control C to copy and escape. Come in here and now we can say equal if and we can click on G3 or whatever G4 and we're going to paste. I'm going to press control and V, the letter V as in Victor, and that gets the max ifs in there. Okay, so that is my condition that I'm testing. I want to know if this large sale is equal to anything in the sales column. And I particularly want to look at this rep number two. Okay, so then I'm going to put in a comma. That is what it's checking. So for rep two, it's going to look at every single sale looking for a match. When it finds a match, I want last name entered into the cell. Okay, that's what it's going to do if it's true. If it's false, I don't want anything entered into the cell. So I'm just going to put a little space in there. And then I'm going to press enter. Now, because I was able to use A4 here, this is another one. I can just copy that down. Okay, and you'll notice that it's pulling the rep number from the ones that I manually entered. Anytime you can use a cell reference instead of hard coding a number, always use the cell reference because that actually allows you to make changes over here and you don't have to adjust any of your formulas. Okay, so that is how we get our rep summary information from this large data set.